What's up, everybody? I'm here with macro cycle analyst and crypto trader, Jason Pizzino. We have a massive video planned for you today. We're going to be going through where we currently sit in the altcoin cycle, answering the question of whether now is the time to buy. We're going to get through some of Jason's thoughts on the cycle, how we should be preparing, positioning ourselves for a potential exit. And then at the end of the video, we're also going to be going through some of the top altcoins to buy this cycle and look at if on Jason's charts, they actually properly align and whether it's worth buying some of the most popular altcoins that you probably hold in your portfolio. Now I'm talking about alts like Pepe, Nia, Solana, etc. Are they actually good buys? We're going to look at that on Jason's charts at the end. Jason, how are you? Welcome to the channel. I'm doing very well besides the big cut on my nose, but that's a story for another day. I'll I'll abbreviate the story for the people. He was trying one of okay. the Hormozy. He got inspired by Hormozy's reels and he tried to wear a nose strip and ripped it off and it yanked some skin <laughs> off. Um, so, so that's the story. But basically, I think we should start a little bit broader before we get into the altcoin stuff later in the video. Um, I would love to get your general thoughts on where we currently sit in the macro cycle. I know you're a big proponent um, of the real estate cycle theory. Where are we currently sitting? <clears throat> if we're talking about the overall traditional markets, global economies, uh, everything else that's going on around the world besides our little bubble of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, then I would say that we're probably in the final stages of the up leg before a major collapse. But within the up leg, I don't want to get too worried about what's happening in the collapse. There's a lot of money to be made in this final stage. What this final stage uh, has been coined is the winner's curse phase, which is essentially like what we would know uh, old coin season to be like where everyone's a winner. Everyone is a professional trader and an expert on how to trade and invest. And that is the, where I think we are in the broad cycle for real estate, for the stock market, and of course, what we love, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I would love to see your charts. I'd love to see this contextualized in terms of how that is lining up with some of your technical analysis for both Bitcoin and altcoins. Okay. I'll show this chart first. This just gives you a bit of an idea of the cycle itself. This is the 18.6 year real estate and economic cycle. And I say that very specifically because it's not the stock market cycle. However, the stock market does work within this cycle. And the reason why we look at real estate and the economy as the underlying, it's basically the base of everything made up around the world is because that is where the most money is held. So it's like Bitcoin and altcoins. If there's no Bitcoin cycle, then altcoins really aren't going to do anything. And you need to see the leader, the king move, and then the rest of the market uh, follows along. So looking at the 18.6, which is an average of the cycles, not to draw it out too long, but just to give you a broad overview, you typically see about 14, about 14 years up and about four years down. It can be 13 up and roughly six down, you know, giving you about 19 years. Sometimes it's been as long as 23, sometimes it's been as short as 17 years. So there is there are specific things that we look out for when it comes to the macro cycle, uh, but we're not gonna get into those in great detail. I just wanna give you the broad understanding of this overall cycle. And essentially we are about here in the second half of the cycle. We've had our mid cycle slowdown, which was the COVID collapse. The markets did not collapse as everyone had predicted or forecasted like they did in, in the GFC. We saw a, a major correction, fantastic buying opportunity. And I mean, the rest is history from that point. Everything, every asset around the world basically has skyrocketed since 2020. Now people will blame it on inflation. They'll blame it on uh, well, money printing, essentially inflation. They'll blame it on many, many, many different things that have occurred at that time. But just know that this cycle has been around for over 200 years and it has seen everything from world wars to inflation to you know political unrest in the Middle East, it's done. It's done everything. So it stood the test of time. That's basically the groundwork for what I do when it comes to to the macro cycles. And essentially, we're in this final stage here, potentially lasting a couple of years. Not talking about crypto, but just the real estate and economic cycle. So I was going to ask you, pertaining to this general cycle theory, how does crypto fit? within it? Do you typically see crypto like top before real estate and, and stocks? Yeah, that's a big one now because, well, we haven't seen crypto in a previous cycle. So it's putting putting out history right now. I don't know for sure. 
um, you know, I'm not trying to claim to know the exact tops or bottoms, but we'll continue to watch out on a chart. Potentially, we see crypto top before the end of the cycle. And the reason I say that is because it's so highly speculative, you'd probably start to see some of those gains come out of the market and then flow into more hard assets like real estate and then potentially the stock market, stuff that could be income producing as opposed to Bitcoin and crypto, which isn't really, it's, it's not income producing. We can lie to ourselves and say that there's 20% returns from staking something. But at the end of the day, we all know what happened to Luna and Anchor and everything else from 2022. And I suspect it will happen again. So in relation to this cycle, as you can see in front of you, that's more of the macro cycle. How's Bitcoin shaping up? So you see that yellow zone. It looks like we're seemingly at an inflection point in terms of price action. How are the Bitcoin, how's the Bitcoin chart? Because that's very important for altcoins, of course, which we'll discuss later in the show. Um, yeah, lining up versus this macro theory. I think it's lining up relatively well. I don't know if it's going to get into 2026 as a top along with real estate and, and the economy. And I suspect stock market might even go a little further. The stock markets mm. could go into late 26 or 27. But, uh, you know, the question is, is Bitcoin. And obviously... I prefer to follow uh, follow the charts. And right now, to me, the chart is suggesting that we're probably heading into our fifth and final wave. Now, there's several other things that I look at. I look at uh, extensions and swings and, and so on and so forth. But just looking at where we currently sit, we've had our first wave, our second wave, our third wave, fourth wave, potentially ending at the low in uh, the 1st of May which then leads us into this fifth and final leg. So it's sort of all working into it. And I'm, I'm guessing at this stage that it'll end earlier than the peak in, in real estate and the stock market. So yeah, it's all, it's all still lining up. We haven't seen a full real estate cycle play out with Bitcoin and cryptos because of course, Bitcoin uh, was first kind of traded. I guess it was mined in 2009. And then we have the first bit of price data starting from around um, 2010 which was essentially at the lows of the real estate cycle. So you got 11, the bottom was around 2011, 2012. So I think it's all going to sort of capitulate around the same times, give or take, which sounds pretty ridiculous, but give or take a year or two. Remember, we are looking at an 18 year cycle. So one year within 18 years, uh, you guys do the maths. What is it? Less than, it's obviously less than 10%, but essentially that's what I'm looking at there when it comes to Bitcoin. And I think we've still got another solid leg up, but then that, from that point, we either get another shorter term bounce uh, or we start to drop into a multi-year bear market. And I suspect the multi-year bear market will also line up with um, the correction for the real estate cycle. Now, there's obviously, I don't know. I've never seen any other data apart from uh, what we've seen here. And if Bitcoin is able to get enough adoption and turn into gold in the next two or three years, maybe we also start to see it increase when everything else is going down. So, you know, that's a, an alternative. We've got, we got to be realistic narrative. with each other, though. It's Bitcoin is very responsive historically to liquidity. In fact, if you track M2 versus Bitcoin, it's the most correlated <clears> ratio. <throat> uh, it's more correlated than equities in Bitcoin, gold and Bitcoin. So, like, keeping in mind that Bitcoin's responsive to liquidity, um, you've got to keep that in mind when when you're trying to you know make these assertions about you know bitcoin becoming a new gold like i'm bullish long term on that being the case but when we're looking at this cycle i don't know if there's enough time for that to happen so if we do see a major drawdown and a liquidity crunch uh, a credit mm -hmm. crunch etc however this ends up eventuating this cycle i do anticipate it'll be hard for bitcoin to um, perform in that environment but conversely if we do see towards you know the end of this cycle really positive liquidity conditions, which is what we're seeing right now. Uh, that mm -hmm. can happen, you know, in a variety of ways, you know, money printing, et cetera. When people go more risk on, then, you know, Bitcoin can perform really strongly and have that, have that final thrust. So, well, I got that chart up for you there. Bit, yeah. Bitcoin and the, the um, money supply here, M2SL, it broke out above the previous old all time highs and now has come back to retest those tops. And it looks like it wants to attempt another, leg up so if we are getting all this money printing you know we're seeing trillions come back in or they're not just buying up as many bonds there's also the credit cycle which a lot of people disregarded back in 2022 saying markets can't go up anymore the fed's not printing they, they keep disregarding um the credit that's being created by the banks 
And now we're starting to see a breakout of all-time highs. When you get a breakout of all-time highs, typically it goes even higher and a lot further than the majority can expect, which is lining up with, with this cycle here where we're seeing further upside, like major, major upside before a pretty significant collapse. So it, they're all I've, sort of I've going got to hand say, in hand. I've got to say something about you, Jason, to the viewers. Um, yes. Look, I'm being completely objective here. One of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the channel is because I believe your read on this market so far has been really spot on, at least compared to like the other macro analysts in the market. Like I remember we were doing spaces weekly. Some of the guys that follow my Twitter will remember. If you're a new YouTube viewer, you, you may not remember. Um, but those spaces, which are all public and all recorded, I think we're, we're talking back at 20 to 25K uh, about how you were flipping bullish, like back at 20K when a lot of the other big traders in the market, am I going to say his name? Fine. Gareth Soloway were really bearish um, and, and calling for lower. And you were one of the only guys when people were bearish to actually start pivoting. Um, and this is all public and transparent. So one of the reasons why I wanted your take on the market is because uh, until proven wrong, you've been, and I'm not saying you'll always be right, but you have been fairly right. Uh, and, and I do respect your analysis on this. And I think you're one of the best, you know, channels for macro analysis um, because your reads being good. And conversely, in in the bull market, you were also issuing some kind of warnings when the market started to drop. I don't think any of us timed the top exactly, but you were at least pivoting to become a little bit more cautious when a lot of people were buying the dip, buying the dip, buying the dip. So I just wanted to say that um, for the viewers that, you know, maybe lack a bit of context on your story. Yeah, maybe haven't seen any of the work that I do. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Obviously, I don't and get everything. Your channel's down below. All right. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Yeah. And obviously, I don't get everything right. And because of my macro views, I'm a bit more of a conservative trader. And we were having a joke about this on my channel earlier, that if we were to mix our specialties, you know, become an ultimate trader. But it just comes down to your personality. And so what I mean by that is, you know, you're very confident on old coins, whereas I'm far more conservative. I'm happy to wait for the breakouts where as that doesn't suit a lot of the old coin market and they want to be, they want to pretend that they're buying all of the dips. Whereas you can basically just make the same sort of money on buying breakouts, but people don't really do that. They think they need to buy the dips or they need to sell the rips all the time. They just keep, you know, trying to short sell a bull market, which you've mentioned traders names here who have been short selling bull markets from 30,000. Look, I love Gareth as a person. I, and I just think, uh, ah, I don't know. It was a good, it was a good contrasting trading style to your, to your style back then. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't only him. It was basically and Capo. 90%. It was 90% of the media. <laughs> and everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. It was 90% of the media just saying that it had to co collapse at that point. So it was kind of an easy contrarian trade at the time, whereas now people are a little bit more neutral. So you sort of lose that alpha when everyone is neutral. But I think that'll come back once we get to some peaks again. And that's that's where I was getting very, very bearish through um, February. Yes. So it wasn't the peak, but I was also getting bearish February and March. And then we started to get that rollover from March into April. And then it came in on the 1st of May. So, so where are you now? What's your opinion? I'll talk about where you think the cycle could top later in the year, but what are you seeing over the next maybe like three to six months, like a little bit shorter term? Three to six months. I mean, my view going back from March is that we were going to see a prolonged period underneath the old all-time high for several signals that I talked about at length on my channel. One was a three-day down rule, which happened directly from the top lower highs, lower lows, three days in a row. Uh, we saw a breakdown of the weekly swing chart here and then a breakdown of um, the weekly at the bottom here as well. So there, there are a few other signals within that. There was many, many weeks up. I think I had this chart up here. There were several other signals that were popping up at the time through March where we just had so many green bars in a row. We had so many uh, months in a row in the same swing. And then I was also looking at the particular months where you would typically see turning points and uh, March happened to pop up quite often around that sort of end of the first quarter. So we got that. It hasn't been a very significant pullback, which I think shows the strength of the market, but nonetheless, there was a pullback and it happened at the extreme hype. So I know that's a long, uh, a long winded way of saying, what do I think over the next three or six months? For me, I'm already into my three to six month view of the market. And I suspected that we were going to see prices underneath the old all-time high for roughly three months or so. Um, somewhere out to four to six was probably the longest end. And I would say by the end of quarter two, we'll probably see 
some all-time high prices. Doesn't mean I'm saying that the we're going to see this massive great It'll pump stand, from there. Yeah, yeah, but I think we'll see the price touch that again. And then uh, if it doesn't happen in quarter three, I suspect quarter four we'll definitely be seeing some pretty big upside moves. So, yeah, that. so that, that's what I was going to ask you. When do you think that big run is? And obviously this translates to alts as well, which we'll get into. Where do you think the big when do you think the big run will happen? Like I've spoken on my channel that there's a lot of catalysts, like, you know, election catalysts, the FTX creditors catalyst in Q3, Q4, looking into Q1 next year, there's some data to suggest that historically that has been a good period, especially the December, January months. Are you, is that aligning with your thinking as well um, on when we could see that real like expansionary phase? Obviously it's a window, right? You're never going to nail it, but just based on where we're sitting now. Yeah. It, there's a lot of ifs till then because I don't know yeah. whether we're going to get the top here. Or like the ETF, for price. example, like no one thought that was coming. <clears throat> that has positive implications that weren't factored into the market two days ago. So yeah. that's you know, like, something that's changed. Last week, all I heard was people saying they're selling out of ETH and swapping into <sighs> Sol. They're selling out of ETH, swapping into Bitcoin. And Everyone was, was talking about it's it the week at the bottom before this event. Like I don't know the event was going to happen, but just that yeah. market sentiment told me that it's probably not the right time to be mm. selling ETH when everyone's talking about selling ETH. Um, yeah, that that's just part of, I guess, experience in the markets. But yeah, over the next, uh, sorry, when this thing is going to pump, there's many options. I know that's a, a crappy answer for everyone, but I think it depends on, do we continue to base out here underneath or around the all-time high? And then if that's the case, then we start to pump later in the year, sort of quarter three, quarter four. I think what people generally want a bearing on is like, when can we expect some sort of cycle top for crypto? I think that's the main question, right? Uh, because that's like- Cycle the, top. Yeah. yeah, I think it's come, the earliest one, if I want to be conservative, is coming out somewhere around late quarter four or quarter one. So mm -hmm. quarter one of 2025, which could mean January, February, And that's March, relatively maybe. early. That's, rel I that's would relatively say that's early. early. That's yeah. conservative, a conservative look. Otherwise, I'd be looking later in quarter five. It's a, I know it's a shitty answer, but the market can do anything up until that point. And I think it's best just to continue to follow the chart. And the best way I, I like to follow the chart is using this GAN swing. And provided this doesn't break down, you've got an upswing. You've got an uptrend. So you can see in previous cycles, the the here we go. If I take this off for you, the monthly swing continues to remain intact throughout the bull market. You get some corrections on it. This is a yellow line here. And then towards the end, you get pretty significant corrections and then the breakdown. So I just continue to follow this all the way up. Like you could get an ending, but if the trend is up, just keep following the trend. And the old saying, and trend is your friend. that's an indicator that anyone can download, right? On TradingView or is it paid? Uh, this one's a paid subscription. You can find the rules to put it together. And if you want to code it, you know, I'm not trying to gatekeep anything. This has been around for over a hundred years, but we chose to get developers to um, uh, develop it Make for it. us, code it up, and then continue to improve it so that it, it remains, uh, you know, up to date. And um, what does it basically track? Just a momentum in the market, right? Trend. Uh, it, it tracks the highs and the lows and tells you when the trend is changing. So it gives you the signal for the uptrends, the downtrends, and then we're able to program entry and exit points from that tool. So what's currently happening for, for Bitcoin? In when did the latest swing change? The latest swing changed on May, uh, when it broke down from the April bar, which I think was on May 1st. We had that low at 56.5K and that put a swing in the monthly, so the macro chart here, and now it's bounced from that point. So we got a higher low forming. Pretty simple. Lows in June, lows in September, now a low in May. So that's that's been a, a pretty decent tool, especially for entries when the market breaks out. So you can see the tops here at 31,000. You got the breakout in October. A lot of people were trying to short the market into that, but understanding the swing chart, it tells you, you got a breakout here with higher highs, higher lows. You are really pushing shit up a hill if you're trying to short into a pretty mm. significant uptrend. So don't short into an uptrend. Is, is, it's something you can take from it so to make money and not to lose a ton of money. So on my channel, I obviously discuss a lot about altcoins. I'm not as macro focused. That's why it's obviously great to have you on today and give some more macro context. In your opinion, how do you trade altcoins based on the Bitcoin 
data? Do you wait for Bitcoin to put in a new high? Are you buying altcoins on the dips? I mean, you alluded to before that that's not your strategy. How do you basically trade alts in accordance with Bitcoin price action? I'll look at strong versus weak altcoins. I talk about that a lot. And I like to look at the altcoin against the Bitcoin pair to identify, well, I say strong versus alt, um, weak altcoins, but to identify altcoins that have a lot of potential to pump harder than other altcoins because they have less resistance overhead against the Bitcoin pairing. And so if Bitcoin's going up and the altcoin's going up against Bitcoin, well, then you've got a recipe for an absolute pump. But if you're trying to look at that, we're going to, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I was just going to say, we're going to look at that. Well, at the end, I think there's another, I want to talk about a couple things first. And then at the end, we're going to go through some of my favorite alts and alts that you guys hold um, based on the comments and based on, you know, stuff we talk about on the channel. And then you can give me your opinion on whether you think it's going to pump versus the Bitcoin chart. So we'll definitely do that at the end. There's lots of, lots of alpha there. Um, First, I, I also want to ask you, so before we get into that, what's your like, exit strategy for the bull run because we talk a lot about buying and we'll get into that at the end right with the old coin setups but first i want to take the flip side what's your what's your exit strategy at at, at the end when it comes to bitcoin when it comes to alts and what are the signal when are you looking what are the signals that will indicate like a potential cycle top on bitcoin reviewing last cycle top i can look at some swings and then the breakdown of swings and i think at this time uh you, you were following along and i was talking about the possibility that the cycle was turning and that was in November, December of 2021. So we had a breakdown of this one here, the weekly swing, and we got a breakdown from the October low. So that at least at first tells me that we're getting a breakdown of a macro uh, time frame. Therefore, I'm not going to be full on risk on and I want to be getting out of the market of riskier assets. And so at that time, I posted to all our members and just said, at this point, I'm out of all of my risky altcoins. Even if the market goes higher, it's possible. I don't know for sure. You know, I don't have the answers and all that sort of stuff. I just look at the probabilities. I'm going to get out of this crap now because this cycle's gone on for long enough. Had about three years up. We're breaking swings. There is less volume. There was much less volume in the market too. You can see all the volume coming in on the way up and then the volume on the way up again, breaking into new all-time high. It wasn't there. There's no one buying. It's just absolutely dead. I know I've got it on Bitstamp, but it, it happened across Coinbase. It was Binance. Mm. You put a collective... Um, uh, accumulation of, of all the volume data and it was just no one there. So that was also showing up as well. Uh, there was another signal that the market pushed into new highs. You can see here in October closed low. So it closed back under the previous price. And that was happening around a lot of excitement that we're going to go to 80,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. So you're sort of getting this demand, this push Selling comes in, pushes it back down, and goes back underneath the prices. So the smart money is signaling that they're not seeing value here anymore. The dumb money continues to buy up these pumps because they get in late. And again, you saw it at the peak in November, a push higher, close underneath those previous tops. So you know what the problem week, is though? By the time by the time the signal is in for Bitcoin, which I think here is like 56K, like probably a sign to go risk off. Altcoins at that point are probably already 40% off their peaks because they blow off and then they, they start to correct massively. Um, or maybe they run slightly later and then correct massively. So what's your altcoin strategy? Do you just, do you ladder out? Do you profit take as you like hit two Xs, multiples, or is, are there signs on, or do you look at each individual alts TA to like get out of specific coins? I'll, I'll look at each individual alts TA and I do like to get out of some when there is a lot of hype. So if everyone's getting super excited by something, it, I, I'm going to be early. That's okay. I get out early, but I, I typically get in early enough to make those gains. And I always just say, it's not about buying the bottoms selling the top, or selling the tops. Take a chunk of profits out of the middle. So as long as you're able to do that, you're going to have money to uh, survive another day in the market and come back and trade again in the market. So yeah. it, it, I don't know. We get caught up in the ego of trying to buy the exact bottom and sell the exact top. But at the end of the day, you're making significant profits at these times, then you've got nothing to worry about because the majority of people don't make profits in the market. So there is those signals of the breakdown. And I also look at the 50% breakdown as well. And when that 50% level breaks down, I'm all out. I don't, I don't care about the communities. I don't care about what they're, what they're, you know, stuffing about talking about how it's the next. Well, they're buying the dip. Yeah. They're they're, they're they're all, it's all the, exactly. Until it's 90% down, then they flip bearish. Exactly. Then they're bearish. 
I saw that on a few big channels that did that at the time. They were basically selling up in May and June of 2022. And you're like, yeah. it's basically at the bottom. But yeah, Solana yeah. was a big one that I posted about and got absolutely ripped apart back in the day. I know I bring it up a little bit, but I, I sold a lot of it around, or all of it. I sold some here in in uh, one sixty ish, and then I sold the rest of it down here. Yeah, the top. And that bearish retest gave you a golden chance to get a second exit, right? Up here at two hundred, yeah, yeah. Definitely. No, back down at one forty uh, afterwards again. Like that was your second signal in that pump. When it got oh yeah, yeah, again. yeah, definitely. Yeah, underneath that, exactly. There's like so three I chances sold... to exit, pretty much. A lot of times, yeah, but at that time for the masses, there's still very, very, there's still a pretty significantly bullish narrative going on or market yep. sentiment that you should still continue to hold and you guys are just idiots. You should have bought the dip and it's going to pump. It does just enough to fool the majority most of the time. And it fooled, and there was coins where it completely fooled me last bull run. Like, you know, mm, sure. and, and fooled a lot of us. Yep. Like that, that happens. So viewers of the channel would know I look a lot at total three at the altcoin index because that's the index that basically encapsulates the entirety of the altcoin market or the top 125 minus uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So looking at the crypto total market cap indexes, what are you seeing in terms of how long left is in is in this altcoin run? So I've got total three here. I know it's on total, but again, I've got a custom indicator that I use. And then it excludes Bitcoin, excludes ah, ETH. And I gotcha. wanted something that excludes stable coins because Total 3 mm. doesn't exclude stable coins. So just looking at this here, we're at about 550 billion. You've got these tops that have come in now at around 630 billion and a nice little support here at 450. The other thing I look at is a tipping point to break out. And I think we uh, alluded to this a little earlier, breaking of monthly swing tops. You can see we're around those levels now. I am on a monthly chart here. And that sits at around 650 to, you know, sort of 660 billion. And then we sort of go on this parabolic run. There, there honestly isn't enough data to confidently say that it's going to happen exactly the same. But I do like the pattern that I'm seeing here. It's just the timing towards the end, which is why I've been conservative on the uh, previous forecast for Bitcoin. And I might be a little bit conservative on, on this one here too. I've got to see what happens next and that will let, allow me to know whether we go on a little further. So with all that background in mind, let's flick on some of the uh, the lines here on the chart. My tipping point I've got is just over these levels here, as I said. So I think once that happens, you can see from the previous cycles that the market's gone pretty parabolic from there. The, the, the why, why does that happen? Uh, it looks like it's, it has less overhead resistance and you can see that there's got clear ground to run into. There is an all time high that it has to contend with last time it hit it, pushed above, closed underneath it for the monthly and then took off again. So it needed a little bit more time to prove the move. I don't mind a, you know, an asset that proves the move. And then if I take a measure from the all time high to that breakout point where it tipped, you got about nine months there. So yep. the, you can see the move happened about 10 months earlier um it started to break out here in january so nine to ten months once we get to that point so we haven't got to the tipping point yet that's why i can't give a definitive answer yet because we haven't got to the tipping point but once we get to that tipping point that's when i would like to start counting from so we have to do something arbitrary here and just say look if it happens next month what if it happens in june mm. then we go nine to then ten you're looking at out. q1 you're looking at a q1 peak exactly basically. yep Nine months is March, 10 months is April. And that if would If it breaks out in Q3, then you would maybe start looking towards early Q2, mid Q2. Uh, Depending on the exact month, obviously. Yeah. 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 Potentially. So if we had a, a, that's a June, where am I at? That's a June date. This would be a July date. And this is an August here, new all time high. I've sort of got a bit of a timing here to see if we can get to a new all time high by August. Say we, say we push out past a tipping point and a new all time high in August. Nine months takes you to about May. Ten months takes you to June. We haven't necessarily seen any tops in the market around that May, June, like end of cycle. We've seen an intermediate top like we saw in 2021. There's April and May top. So maybe it's another intermediate top. And then we have another final leg into maybe a you know, September or October end. I honestly don't know, but I've got all of those plays in mind. The main thing I I can see from my own analysis, the probabilities would say we're not at the end yet.
So I'm happy to say that we're not at the end yet. Um, and then I'm just waiting. So are you for that buying? Are you buying old coins now? Or do you only buy once we cross the tipping point? Uh, no, no, I've been buying old coins now. I've yeah. bought since around November. Yeah. So that's pretty much my my first little entrance. And then from around that sort of January, February period. And now on this pullback, that has been my my uh, rotation and more purchases from around April. So we had this higher low form. And then I posted on X, like I can see a higher low forming for altcoins. And I think it's time to start getting into some more altcoins if you haven't already. Because once it starts to break out, you're still going to make gains. You're just playing with everyone else now, as opposed to now when it's quiet. Yeah. You know, there's crickets around. No one's really. Um, so we're in an accumulation in what... period. That's my belief. You also subscribe to that. Generally, we're in an accumulation period. Faults. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the first accumulation. I'd say no. that's probably like the second or <laughs> yeah. or yeah. third accumulation also, for many yeah. people. So you're not getting in early. But, but it's but one of I the last, and, and maybe one of the last accumulations for this cycle. Yeah, there could be another one, but I think you're really playing with fire with the next one because I would dare say that it would come back down and and, and go below those levels in the in the next accumulation. Mm -hmm. So in light of this, now that we've kind of looked at the alts, let's go through some specific ones and let's see where they sit on your BTC pairing because I found we did this on your channel in the video. Uh, I'll even link it in the description once it's live. And I found it re a really interesting exercise. So... I'll just run through, I think, some of the most popular alts I think people probably hold. I think start with Solana because I think Solana is Solana. Yeah, it's the premier L1. So how's that one looking? And then we'll move into some of the more degen stuff like the memes, AI, etc. All right. So you've asked for Solana and I like to look at them against the Bitcoin pairings. Solana is showing relatively pretty good strength today. Uh, it's closing above the 50% level and it's showing as I said, good strength against Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin's going up or at least holding its ground, that also means that Solana is going up, but more so than Bitcoin. So we just want to keep beating Bitcoin here. That's the game. All right. So that's Solana. That's one of the leading L1s. Uh, interested to hear your thoughts on Render versus Bitcoin, because I know that's one of the leading AI coins. And when it yeah. comes to tracking AI, looking at the leaders can give you a good you know, overview of the sector, obviously for the large caps. Well, again, another strong one. It's up against its BTC value. It's above 50% on the uh, decline here. So this is the correction. And it's above that 50% level. So that's a good sign. Strong. I'm interested to see what you think on the weekly um, compared to like last cycle performance. Render against I'll BTC kind of... has broken its old all-time high. So that's that's in a pretty strong position. Less resistance overhead. I think even the new traders would understand when you got less resistance overhead, then there's more room for it to pump. I don't know why we don't use this more often. You know, like people keep trying to get laggards that are falling and falling and falling. And they just think, oh, there's more room to the upside for it to go. It's like, no, it has more resistance points to the upside before it gets hit down again. But once it's in open ground, it's a balloon floating away. And this is kind of something we talk a lot about on the channel, like being in the strong narratives. I discussed this. Um, on your show, like, you know, the, the AI, the memes, the, I mean, not like deep in, these are kind of the narratives where I'm personally gravitating my portfolio towards. There are a couple of outliers like gaming and stuff, which haven't run yet that I'm interested in, but continuing mm -hmm. on this theme of looking at alts, give, give me a look at like, I don't know if you have the Pepe chart up or the whiff chart, but these are two leading meme coins. Um, Let's go to whiff. I would love your whiff opinion BTC. on this. It's a difficult one because there's not much data here. The beauty is it's above the 13th of April correction. If you guys remember, we had those two big days down, the 12th of April, 13th of April, huge moves to the downside, and it's still holding above that. But it's not in as strong of a position as what Pepe is in. But I don't have a Pepe versus BTC. Uh, the good news for Pepe, USD, uh, yeah, USD is it's in new all-time highs. It's hit 100% of the same move. So it's done 100% of the move out of the February low to the March top projected off that April low. Again, that 13th of April is a, is a significant turning point and it's a long way from that um, from that 13th of April. If you were to take a uh, whiff against USD, it's not going to be anywhere near as far away from that 13th of April. There it is. So you can see Pepe's in a stronger position. And for some, again, like we talk about, you want to get on the strong altcoins, not necessarily at the end of their move, but 
in the earlier stages so that you're not holding laggards. Laggards are, I don't know, the stuff here, 2017 garbage and dead charts. So hopefully your coins don't show up on my list here. Hopefully not. Well, the next one I'm going to talk about, some might though, um, because yeah, I think it's interesting to look at this perspective. Look at Phantom now, because that's that's a coin that a lot of the OG viewers um, may be interested in mm. if, if you're following Last Bull Run, but it's also one that's been running because of its rebrand from Phantom to Sonic and the new chain that's launching that's super fast, etc. So interested right. to see what, what you're seeing on Phantom. Yeah, I might have to move this one to the dead list. It's got a long way to go Dead. to get to those tops. Yeah, it's it's not at a level that I would want it to be at at this stage of the cycle. So, you know, earlier in the stream, we are talking about we're potentially in that um, that final leg of the move up. I've lost that Bitcoin chart, but you guys get the deal. We had that final move up. We're in that final stage yeah. of the real estate cycle. So I want to see these things at least breaking some previous resistance and holding above that level so that when the energy comes back, it's got less resistance overhead to run whereas now when the energy comes back it's going to use all of that energy to try and bust through 50 percent bust through that top and then bust through the next top and then it can go on a significant run and only then In interesting because obviously if you look at the you know usd chart um it is up i don't know what it is quite from the bottom maybe a 5x 4.5x so it's in line with bitcoin it, it actually has outperformed bitcoin from the bottom but obviously bled more on the way down uh, for various yeah. reasons. So is, is that something you also factor in or are you willing just to write something off just based on its Bitcoin pairing? I mean, it's, it's not necessarily that we have to write it off. It's just you have limited time. And that was something that we discussed earlier. If there's limited time in this cycle. Why bother getting married to something that might not produce the same returns as something that... Uh, that that doesn't have all this overhead baggage. Like Render hasn't had all that overhead baggage and it just has outperformed FTM. G give me a look at Near Protocol because that's another one that's synonymous with AI due to the fact that Ilya um, is heavily in the AI space and it's also an L1 play. So it's interesting, but yeah, I'd love your opinion on, on the chart there. Yeah, so we looking at the resistance levels, there, there are several overhead, 50%, the tops here that I've got circled and then more of the tops for, uh, from the old all-time highs. I think this one is stronger than FTM and I suspect it'll do bigger gains than FTM just based on the chart alone. And of course, FTM could come back at any time, bust through those levels and get back to level playing field in the next couple of weeks or months. I don't know. And if it does, well, then it sets itself up to take out the all-time high. So it's not the end of the world, but um, this has obviously done better returns than FTM from that low and it shows on the BTC chart. You can see it was down at, 3,500 and now is at 11,000. Other stuff I've looked at is like Pendle. You know, that's been pretty yeah, well. Yeah, RWA. Bro, I called that at, I literally called that at a dollar on, on the show back in maybe like 80 cents back at the, in Q4 last year. So it's been one of my strongest performers. Um, insane. Yeah. Insane. That's another RWA play. I mean, I know it's like most, it was liquid staking, but they are, doing a lot in rwa so that's interesting it's in my i put okay. it in my portfolio video uh other stuff that what what do i think people would want to see um they hold a lot of ai coins are we actually very interesting um with their supercomputer launch how's are we looking 2.5 to 3 bill val depending on what i think i looking. dumped it into my garbage and dead list yeah i don't i don't no, oh, this no is this is arbitrum my bad. AR, look at look at AR. That is kind of on the garbage and dead list. Sorry, Arbitrum holders, but AR. <laughs> uh, AR. This Where is, is on the garbage. Top. There's, That's not on my not not on my garbage list. Yeah, this is on the pump it, list, surely. It's yeah, yeah, it's not as good as maybe render or something, but nothing. Not everything has to be a render, of course. It's done. Whoa, well, that's a pretty decent number. Is it 13,000? Now it's at 65,000 yeah. Satoshis. So it's done pretty good moves. It's still just got the a lot of overhead resistance from previous cycles. So the 50% there and the previous old all-time highs. But provided it gets above those levels, then you know it's, it's sitting in a pretty reasonable position to tackle this stage, not too far out from any sort of altcoin season. So it's got it's got less work to do to take out those previous resistance levels if 
the altcoin market comes back, you know, if we get a nice big pump. What Jason's talking about here is like output, making sure your altcoin portfolio outperforms Bitcoin, because if it doesn't, that's not a very good RR proposition. You could just sit in Bitcoin and chill. So the goal of an altcoin investor is to outperform Bitcoin. We're, we're looking at actually some of the stronger coins here. Like even you say something like Phantom is looking weak. Show them what actual weakness looks like. Show them things <laughs> because most coins in the market have not moved. Like show us like XRP, ADA, DOT, HBAR, like these coins, like that is, they're the definition Dead. of weakness just for content. This is this is a definition of weakness. When when the market pumped in October of 23, ADA did that and now it's at a new low. That's a new low from April. When, when, it, when it dumped, it went to a new low. The stuff that we've looked at, even Phantom did not go to a new low. So Phantom is way stronger than ADA. Uh, I think Adam makes sense in in the whole ecosystem you know there's only good things that have been said about it and it's it should be a good project i could fall in love with it but i can't fall in love with its chart and it's at new fresh lows i think it's still giving out 20 percent returns right there, there are problems with adam and it's basically it's a very um fractured uh fragmented liquidity ecosystem which is a problem for like wealth accrual and also due to the governance constraints of Atom, it's kind of been, it's kind of more of a governance token than it is. And there's been proposals that have been rejected, but basically it doesn't accrue as much value as the community would like. And it's quite a, um, a fractured community. Atom tech is great. We've seen mm. Injective, Say, Celestia all utilize the SDK, but Atom itself just doesn't accrue value in, in the correct manner. And that's why it's weak. Uh, speaking of Say, this one's been... Uh, not overly strong, but it's not super bad either. Like it's not underneath the previous accumulation zone. So it's something else that I look for as well. You know, if, if there's been accumulation, there's been a reason for investors to be buying up this token. You don't want to see the price go back into that zone because that could potentially mean that the reasons they were buying before are now gone. Why would the price let's, go back to a level that it, that it was before? Let's take a look at AOS. That's in, I don't know if it's on your charts, A-I-O-Z. It's the, it's a deep yeah. AI play. It's looking all right on the USD chart, but against BTC, it is, it's also looking all right. It's had a lower top, but we also have higher lows. So it's kind of in this trading range. I've got my stops down here. <clears throat> you know, I've got some position in AOS. My stops are down here. If it breaks down, I'm, I'm just out. Yeah. Sorry, I keep getting ideas. I keep cutting off, but I, I just... Keep thinking of coins. Let's look at gaming because this is an example of a narrative which, look, I've spoken about the fact that I'm accumulating it because I think there may be one very strong gaming leg this cycle, but I'm sure you're about to tell me that it looks terrible. <laughs> so maybe we look at, let's look at a strong one, Prime, if you have Prime. Prime, that is a strong one. That's also an AI play. And then let's look at some of the other ones. I keep writing Prime down on my to buy list. It's good. There you go. What a, I'm I, yeah, I had this as an example I put on my channel a while back. It's above, it bounced off 50%. So that's a good sign. And this and is gaming. It's been running. So, there you it's go. Because it's also AI, so it's benefiting. But no, uh, Prime, Prime's good. Yep. Yeah, if it can get above that, that's going to be that's gonna be nice. Also add some shilling. And I actually called this on the channel at six, seven dollars. Viewers would remember. But the problem is you get more views in the bullish periods than when my channel was getting no views. That's when I had a lot of these calls because no one cared, but now they get yeah, well, <laughs> the It happens every single time. So the main thing I always say is make sure you continue to follow your charts, follow your yeah. fundamentals, follow something, someone throughout the boring periods. The boring period is when the money's made. 100%. And also this is a great like strategy for the viewers that aren't utilizing the BTC pairs. Like even myself, I'm going to start paying a bit more attention to it as another point of reference to USD. I think it's a great, it's a great habit to get into at least, you know, before entering to check both, see how things yeah. work. I, I just found it way easier to scan many, many markets in a row because I can quickly see, is it going to be strong or weak? I don't know exactly know what they're going to do, but because there's so many to look at, I can just go, oh, that one's pretty weak. I'm not going to waste my time. I can spend my time elsewhere and it can take me five to 10 seconds as opposed to hours trying to research something. And the Bitcoin chart really shows you where the strength lies. So it, it quickly strips it out. I used it because I just wanted to do things quicker. Show me like an IMX or a Beam. They're like two right. of the leading gaming plays that I hold. I don't hold Gala, but I hold those two. All right. Um, in, I love IMX or Beam. IMX is in my garbage down here. IMX BTC. Wow. 
that's the 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 only good I can see from this is that it's still above the October low. That's that's the good there. Okay. It's attempted to break out, but it came back into the accumulation zone. It's been it's been here the entire move since 2022. Mm-hmm. So mm. it just hasn't moved out of that. It's not saying that you haven't made gains against USD. You definitely made gains because yeah. it's higher than where it was in October. But why, like, why is it being suppressed? I don't know. The, the, there is a bit of sell pressure. I have a couple answers we'll go into later. And Beam? Maybe I won't get Beam. into it now. I don't think I have Beam on my, my list. So this, this they have right? a very big treasury. It's Merit Circle. Um, it's, it's a big AI infra play they also develop their own games so so i like this one it doesn't look so bad there was the april bottom and i put my 50 percent. it's got to get back above this top here um we've had to create this chart manually because there is no beam btc chart but uh yeah once it gets back above that level there on the 23rd well then you're back in the strong half of the of the tool here if i take it all the way back to the low if it was in fact that's all the data there is from november well you're yeah. basically toying with the 50 percent right now so an earlier entry but higher risk would be just above the levels of yesterday and the day before. That would be a pretty safe entry there if it was to close. But um, uh, you, you've obviously playing with a bit more fire because you're closer to the lows. So either way, it's still looking all right. I've got one more gaming one, R-O-N, Ron. It's also in my portfolio, uh, Ronan. It's actually been leading a lot of the recent runs when we have had like a week of outperformance, which has been sparing but i'm interested to see what you're seeing ronan all right is this the right logo yeah all right let's click it pretty sure yeah not doing too bad have a look at the rest of the history that's what i've seen with a fair bit of the gaming stuff it 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 did its pump through october into february or march and it's come back into the previous accumulation zone yeah so you're still up you're still up from that october pump and pretty significantly so yeah it just um you just want to see it get back above the 50%, which would also be back above the previous resistance. So yeah, not the worst. You're picking, you're picking up some pretty decent uh, gaming there, unlike IMX. I think Alluvium's also a gaming. Well, I'm showing you the stuff that I actually like, whereas like there is... Well, there are things that I like that are down. UOS, I'm sure that's making you lows. PYR, <laughs> I'm sure that's making what is you it? lows. UOS, U-O-S. I mean, U-O-S. It looks dead, but I'm a bit of a different trader. I actually don't Ooh. mind on the USD chart just picking some up just in case gaming comes back. But I have a, maybe a slightly different approach to something well, like this. Yeah, I mean, that is all the way down and dead. If it does come back, the, <laughs> the, the, the problem you have is where was your average? And, you know, uh, you're pretty honest with how you position yourself, whereas a majority of... YouTube influencers are not going to be that honest and they're going to be buying the dip and they've probably bought the dip from here down to here on every single dump on many different cryptos. Their average price is probably somewhere here. So they mm. would have been better off waiting for confirmation mm. and buying about there as opposed to generally speaking, to generally speaking, waiting for confirmation. I say this a lot on the shows is the way to go for someone like me though, like especially when you're dealing with a bigger portfolio and you've got the leeway with stables and you just, if you want to make a play, and you like the play, I have no problem doing it, but it has to be calculated. Fair enough. You know, you got your strategy and you stick to it because from here, 200, man, who cares? It gets to 600 or 1,000. There's still like a 5X in that. It doesn't have to go very far. But the problem for most people is their their average price is probably way above there. So they think they're making money when they're not. And they. I don't actually hold any. Um, I actually don't hold any. This is one that last week I said in my Discord, I was... Going to pick some up, but I don't. I haven't made my buy yet, so it's good, right? Because if I had that idea three months ago, I'd be down another fifty <laughs> percent. Yeah, who knows? This thing could keep going and going and going. That's why yeah. I prefer to wait for the confirmation. Doesn't mean I get the bottoms, and I'm buying later than the masses, or so they think. Because you you'd miss if you're waiting for a reversal here, you'd miss a three to four x, and then probably. you'd buy, be buying in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you've like you said, I I haven't lost 50 percent every single buy the dip opportunity exactly so you'd rather on be late than than catching old coins. yeah i don't want to be catching a knife like i've, I've done yeah. that before it's not my style um and those fun. people that it's really not yeah, fun catch- emotionally because then you're just back <laughs> no. holding and you, yeah, it becomes a real strain exactly 
And how much cash do you have? A lot of people don't have endless amounts of cash. So they're just sort of sitting in these altcoins and then they rotate out of them when they're down 60 or 70% and they try and put into something else and then that thing goes down as well. Like it's just not, it's not fun. I love, this is, I've said this on the shows before. I love holding a lot of cash at all times. Like I'm above 20 to 30% because I, I love being able to like enter positions without having to worry and have the burden of panicking when it goes down. So like, I know not everyone is in that situation, but it's, it's, it's a nice position to be in when, when you can play the game that way. And that's how I always, maybe in 2021, I was a bit over leveraged, but this cycle, my mindset's completely changed surrounding how much cash I hold. And I've become a much better trader. Like it's funny because you think, oh, Miles, you're less exposed to the market. You're making less money. Well, just on my trading alone, not even from other businesses or other income, just from my trading alone, I make more money. Why? Because now I can go in with more size and then I can, I'm, I'm more, I have a high propensity to exit and take profits and, and mm -hmm. wait for high conviction opportunities and take them when they present. And that's changed the game for me versus being all invested and having to rotate and stuff. Cause that game's not fun and it creates emotional um, issues like yeah. when it comes to decision-making. It's what I've heard from, experienced traders of many, many years. So it's it's pretty interesting that you're finding that out early on at 23. You know, I had a chat with um, Jason Shapiro on my channel a while back. I don't know if you you know him. He, yep. it was only a few weeks ago, actually. He, he's, uh, you know, a, a legendary trader. He's been in Market Wizards. Anyone that wants to learn how to trade has read Market Wizards. And he just looks for like high conviction trades like, what's the point of trying to take a trade all the time? Just you wait for the high convictions. You only need to make a few trades a year to make bank. Whereas a lot of people just sort of, they, they do what they do in their everyday life and just keep trying to make dozens and dozens of trades. Many in of which March, don't work out. In March, I had my biggest month ever in crypto dollar wise during the whole crazy mm -hmm. AI meme coin thing. Um, and I was obviously, you know, trade doing a lot of active trading at that time, including leverage because that was, that was the time I made more money dollar wise in March. Um, than I made in January, February, even April and May combined, um, uh, May's been good for me, but not like e March just eclipses all of them by a factor of two or three. And that just shows you that when the time's right, when you go in with size at the right time, that can all you need is one month to change your life. And if you, you and if you go in with conviction at the right time, that's like with the one or two trades that you have conviction in, that's all mm. you need. You don't need to be trying to play the game all year round either, or every single old coin all the time. So that's something that I've definitely learned. It's res, like keeping dry powder when the stars align, go in bigger. You know, it, it go, and I'm not saying for people to be reckless. It's just I'm just sharing my experience. But going bigger when I have conviction and really like concentrate, focus on that position or those positions. And um, and when I've made enough money and I'm happy with it, cut the position and then wait for the next opportunity. And I'm, I'm not a full-time trader. Like I have a long-term portfolio. The viewers know this. But in terms of the more active part, which may be 40 or 50%, I'm, I'm pretty willing to just be like ruthless with it. And I put this chart up here because it's similar to what you're saying. The market figures tries to figure out what it's doing 80% of the time and then 20% of the time it actually makes the move. Mm. So you don't have to be in the market all the time. And like you said, in March, you made most of your money. The rest of the time, yeah, you've had good months. But a lot of it happens in one at one point. So people can make money, but then they give it all back because they keep trying to do what they did the previous months, but the conditions have changed. So knowing... exactly. And knowing when those conditions change and having something in your plan that suggests or tells you, look, things aren't the same as they used to be, uh, reduce your positions. You're gonna you're gonna survive a lot longer in the game. So that's what I come down to here. Risk management helps you survive longer than the rest because there's oh, there's just so much to learn. That's why I love trading and investing. I know people say they love trading, but I guess it's the psychology around what it takes to be a better trader over and over and over again. So it's not necessarily that I like to gamble in the markets. A lot of people talk about that. I just want to trade. They essentially like gambling, like sports betting apps. But it's like the psychology about how did that work? You know, like how do the markets work? How, how do you get just from a tiny amount of time, like oversized gains? And there's so many things that come into it. We said the 
We said risk management helps you survive a lot longer. Um, I got hard trading is a choppy trend. Like it was choppy in April, but it's way easier when the trend is 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 clear. So I said easy trading is is clear. You get breakouts. Look at that that trend from uh, February into March. The trend was so clear. Just stay with the trend. Then it gets choppy. It's over. I just thought of a tweet idea. All and right. It, you just and and it came off the back of something you said. The the longer you spend in crypto, the more of a trader you become versus an investor. And I think that's true. That's a true statement for my experience as well. Because when you first start crypto, you you're investing for the long term and you're so passionate. But but then at some point you realize that. You know, no matter if the fundamentals are the best in the world, it's so macro reliant and it's reliant on trend that if you take more of a trader's mindset, you'll actually outperform. And that's not to say chop it in and out every day. You can trade over a three to six to 12 month time span, but having more of a trader's mindset uh, has definitely, definitely helps a lot. And I think the longer people spend in the market, the more they'd become that and less just like DCAing and holding forever. Yeah. You find a strategy that works for you. I like the longer mm. term. If it's not beating Bitcoin or or another one or two majors, then then what's the point in wasting your time in it? You know, Bitcoin's done uh, very significant moves, 15 grand to 70, 75 grand. Um, Do you like Bitcoin as a long-term like wealth play? Because there are one of the issues that I'm finding, um, and I won't go too much into my personal situation, we just don't want to spend too long here, is like, where do you put your money? Like when you start making good money, I mean, it sounds ah. like a first world problem. To, it sounds like a first world problem. It comes to the end of the like, cycle and everything collapses. We were going to talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we could, yeah, yeah, we could touch on it quickly. It's like, it becomes <laughs> a thing of, okay, you've made your money and I'm getting there, but I've st obviously still got a lot more to go if this cycle does do what yeah. I think it's going to do. But at some point it's like, where the F do I put my money? That's the question people are going to be asking. Like it's it's a great problem to have, but it's something you don't realize until you're in that position. Um, it's like watches, cars, real estate. It sounds obvious, but at the end of the cycle, it becomes a bit more dubious. I, I've talked about that a bit on, on on the channel as well because it comes up a fair bit for our viewers. Um, guys, we can talk for forever, of course, and that's why this lighting looks quite bad. <laughs> it's gone to nighttime night. here. Miles and I have been <laughs> yeah. talking for so long and I just decided to put a little light on here. Otherwise, I can turn the lights on above, but it sucks. Anyway, <clears throat> where do you put it? Honestly, I think... Well, honestly, the data shows cash and that's where I'll be putting the majority of mine or real estate. And the, the the next question that typically comes up is you can't have it in cash. The US dollar is corrupt. They're manipulating it. It's inflating. It's going to hyperinflate. Cash is trash. That typically happens and it goes for everything in the markets with investing. It typically happens at the tops of the market. The top of the stock market, 2021, early 2022, cash is trash. Ray Dalio was quoted saying that, or at least that's when it became more popular. And so that was the top, the best place, the best thing that performed in 2022 was cash because everything else became cheaper on the correction. So I suspect that'll, that'll happen the next cycle again. And really there's no other world currency that we could, we could go to yet. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen this cycle. I can't see people what about gold? Finding, um, gold. Because gold mean, will be underperforming at a market top because equities and more risk on stuff will be running. <laughs> and then and then it'll shift into gold as the market starts dropping and people panic, no? I, I also went through this with the charts and looked at where each of the pivot points were in 2008. So 2007 was the peak and then 2008 was the crash where should we have had all our money? And if you believe you can absolutely time the market uh, you know, perfectly, then in an ideal world, what happened was real estate peaked here in 2006. The st it started to go down. The stock market peaked here in 2007. It started to go down. You can see that 2008, 2009. Gold ran up, peaked in 2008, had a correction and then started to run up and peaked in 2011. And uh, that's all our, that's, that's the main assets that were there at the time, right? So you had all these peaks, but within that gold movement, you had the stock market bottoming, which then had more gains than gold. 
So you had to flip again. Real estate bottomed about here, 2011, 2012, and then that started to take off. And then by 2011, gold was coming down and we know it did nothing for like 10 years. Hmm. So if you can pivot between all of these every six to 12 months during that six year window, then that's the way to go. But what I came to my, my own conclusion, so you've got to come to your own, your own conclusion yourself is what's going to be easiest because I don't, I, I, there's no way I'm going to time every single one of these, even though I believe. And have the conviction, let's stuff. say you're trading with millions of dollars to have the conviction to put, you know, to switch millions out of cash into gold. It's like such a big swing and such a risky trade when it's yeah. supposed to be safe, but it just feels well, risky. <laughs> yeah. But this is, this is life cycle. Things don't have to be exactly the same either. Like, yeah. um, I, I would much, and, and then to get out of real estate costs a lot of money. So obviously in, in Oz, uh, US is going to be this very similar. UK will be similar. Canada will be similar. Uh, we, we pay a lot of money to get in and out of real estate. So it's kind of that position that you don't want to lose. And then you would have to pay taxes on any capital gains that you had too. So for real estate, even if it drops 20 or 30%, I know it's probably going to be more in different regions. It could be 50, 60% in, in uh, like smaller towns or holiday locations that are much more volatile. Mining towns, they, they're definitely more volatile. But if you if you got your blue chip cities in the US, UK, Canada, Australia, you, what we've seen from history is probably that sort of twenty ish, maybe a little more percent drop, and then you start to see it come up from there. I know that there are plenty of people suggesting that we're going to see a ninety percent collapse in real estate. Uh, I'll so let the them top, believe that. L- yeah. let, let me let me put this scenario to you. We have a big altcoin rally because this is relevant to my situation to some extent. We have a big altcoin rally. We make a shit ton of money. We make millions. Bitcoin's at 120K. Okay, we're not going to time the top, but the market starts reversing. So I cash out 50% of my portfolio. You wouldn't at that point put it straight into real estate because you believe that real estate at some point is going to go down further. So you would keep that in cash and then wait for the real estate crash and then buy real estate later. Is that kind of the thinking here, roughly? To, roughly or would you just buy real estate at the top because put yourself in my shoes at the top i'm gonna be like oh i've got all this cash i need to buy real estate like that's how i would be thinking because where do i put my money it's being wasted in cash like that's i know i'm preempting my thoughts in the future that's what i'll be yeah. thinking at the time but you would say no well, hold, just, off, hold the cash for like a year or two i i, I potentially wouldn't hold off all the cash if you need to you buy a house and live in yeah, if, if you need to buy something to live in, go and buy something to live no, in. No, 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 because what you, what you live in isn't an investment. I mean, that's a classic argument we can have. But um, yeah, but but I'm saying if you yeah. want to protect some of that money, knowing yeah. that it could go down twenty or thirty yeah. percent, yeah, it's potentially safer. It depends on the amount of money too. So there's a lot of variables when it comes to what you do at the end, because this what relates to you might not relate to the next person. Someone else might not have $2 million to go and throw into a property straight away and pay it cash, yeah. right? But if, you, if you're if you going to put it into a property at $2 million, um, I don't know what happens in a collapse or years after a collapse, whether the government start to freeze bank accounts or yeah. you're only you're only insured up to 250 grand. It's not necessarily the government either. Like what if one of the banks goes down? Then you're only insured mm. up to 250 grand. So you're better off putting it into real estate, a $2 million property that goes down 30%. You lose 600 grand. It's better than losing 1.75 million, right? Diversification, you right? You can't be all in cash either. Yeah. Exactly. So I'd have it diversified in cash and real estate. That's that's my, my goal. And because I've already got real estate, I don't think I want to sell it and then have a bigger cash position at the end. My, my plan now mm. isn't to be buying any more real estate unless... You know, I need to put some money somewhere, but uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting. Sorry, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm building cash. a cash position. And when you say cash, my, my do you put it into build a cash position? Do you put it into treasury bills at like you know five percent a year bonds, or do you or like money markets, or do you just look at uh, like whatever the standard? I just look at cash in bank. Quite low. I just look yeah. at the cash in the bank and take it. You could invest in treasuries, at least protect a few percent a year. Well, you're still getting interest here as well. So we're still yep. getting three to five percent interest. Okay. So you put a million in, you're getting thirty to fifty grand. You pay tax on that, but yeah. But are you holding? 30. Are you holding AUD? AUD, yeah. Not USD. It's no, such a USD. Shit coin though, right? Huh? It's a shit coin. It just bleeds versus at, the dollar. You don't want to be holding AUD, I don't think. At different times in the cycle, 
at the site in the in in the cycle now the us dollar is is heading down so us dollar is i think on its way down which is the second half of the real estate cycle that's what happened here you can see there there's the second half of the real estate cycle if you guys forget we were just talking about it right here so this is the second half this is the first half in the second half uh that was 2001 to 2006 or 7 uh, it basically US dollar just got absolutely tanked, it collapsed. So you would prefer and, to be in Australian dollars right now than than US dollars? Yeah, Aussie dollar is basically. Uh, it looks like it's trying to base out, and using my fifty percent, we start to get some closes above sixty eight cents. Hold on, zoom it's out though. It's, it's in a downtrend. Zoom out, zoom out. It's shit. Look. Yeah, yeah. It's in a downtrend. I'm just saying for the second half this? of the. Hold on. I'm just saying for the second half of the real estate cycle, right? Yeah. So No, I, looking... I, find it, I find it very interesting because obviously I'm denominated in USD, but um, not AUD because <clears> I'm not in Australia anymore. Uh, obviously, yeah. though, if you're international, the bank there's options. in the If you have an international bank account, you can choose what currency to sure. denominate in. So I, can, I have the choice. I could ask my bank to hold AUD and they'd probably let me if I wanted, but it's, it's in US dollars. Yeah. Exactly. You got the choice. Maybe hold a bit of USD, a bit of um diversify. I mean, this all comes down to diversification, I think. Or right? euro. You don't want to be one. Yeah. You could be holding What's some euro? euros. You could be holding some some great British pounds. You can see a lot of them bottomed at the COVID dump and then have bounced. At that COVID bottom, this was huge panic news that uh the US dollar was was rising and everyone should be buying US dollars. That was at that the exact top when the pound <laughs> bottomed and the euro bottomed. I saw everyone on social media posting about how how high the US dollar was and how low all of their currencies were. And that marked the bottom. And from that point... What about yen? Yen's been... Uh, yen's has not been very good at all. So I think they're still well, you know, printing. Oh, this is US dollar against the yen. So it, the uh, US dollar is gaining against the yen. Uh, yeah, this is the major pair. These are the major yen, pairs. US dollar. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yeah, so that's, I'm hearing that's what's it's, going it's, on it's the situation that's tough, um, very very tough economically. But yeah, a lot of the money is flowing into the stock market. Here is mm. your, here is your stock market at new thirty four year highs. It's at an all time high. It that's because people are trying years. to. Well, that's one because stocks are now denominated higher in yen, and two because people yeah. are trying to protect right against currency debasement, and they're FOMOing in. Well, that's what happens at tops. <laughs> you know, it can go on longer than we expect as well. So yeah, it's a tricky, yeah, I'm, it's I'm, a tricky economy, Japan. I don't know how many Japanese viewers we have, but it's tricky. It's perform. It's underperformed for many, many, many years. Yeah, um, there's the underperformance there. It bottomed in 2009, and then it's been on a climb since 2009. It, look, it's a good conversation, but it's it's interesting because I spend so much time in crypto, right? And this is why I'm being so inquisitive because I do spend a lot of time focused on alts. It's very interesting to me um, to, to zoom out and take a look at this stuff. Like I haven't checked my stock portfolio. Believe it or not, I have an equities portfolio. I have not checked that in months and it's valuable. Where, it's where like is it least... based? US stocks or Aussie stocks? Uh, mix, mix, mix. I bought Apple mixed. very cheap. So it, that's a long-term thing I'm holding, but um, yeah. mixed AUD, U USD, and I, I haven't looked at it in months. I'm actually going to check it today. You've made me interested to see where it is, but it's significant dollar wise, but it's just not, I just don't even think about it. Like it's not fun. It's yeah. So when you boring. become a DGen, it's very hard to go back, isn't it? It's boring. I make like 10, 20, I think I'm averaging like 15% a year, which is good, but it's like still crap compared to like the thousand percent. I, can, I don't know. My brain's fried. It's <laughs> totally fried. There's heaps that we can get into, you know, even coppers at new all time highs, uh, which is, you know, in a lot of technology. So we'll, we'll, we'll do more shows. If it, let me know in the comments yeah. below if you like. Well, Jason will be in the description for his channel, firstly. Secondly, if you do enjoy this conversation, I might clip it up a little bit, but if you We've do enjoy We've been talking it, for a long time. It's been yeah, fun. If you do enjoy, you can, you can let us know. But I'm genuinely interested because I come, we come from different lenses. You know, one more conservative, one more degenerate. My view in the market is like, look, this is like, the last, I say last chance, but if we are heading into this end period, banana zone, whatever you want to call it of the, of the cycle, like this is, this is the time to like fully maximize it. Yes. And generally crypto is a, is a proxy or a way for you to achieve the goal of wealth generation. But once you've made 
wealth generation, then there's a whole other part of this, which comes later, 2025, 2026, where do you put your money? And that's something that um, we don't need an answer to now. Focus on making money first. Good problem to have, but eventually it's going to be a problem everyone needs to think about. Uh, if you're not ready for wealth, it can uh, it, it can cut you off guard as well. Slip so, you by. Yeah. yeah. You can All really right. burn it too. Like I'm an idiot sometimes <laughs> with, my, with my- I'm happy to chat. I'll get you back on the channel in a month or two. And and likewise, yeah. we'll continue to chat if, if the viewers want to see it as well. Cool. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.